Did you know that depression affects more than 300 million people worldwide? And 30 to 60% of patients will not respond to an antidepressant. So could the problem be in your gut? Well, in our video on why antidepressants don't work, we actually talked about and touched on the gut-brain connection. In this video, we're actually going to go into a little bit more detail about this brain-gut connection and then talk about ways that you can support this gut-brain connection to improve your mental health. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the gut has been coined our second brain, and there's a bi-directional relationship between the gut and the brain or this gut-brain axis. This gut-brain axis integrates intestinal functions, but also links both cognitive and emotional responses of the brain with peripheral gut functions. And many of you probably understand this when you get anxious and you get butterflies in your stomach, or when you just have that gut feeling about something, that is an example of that gut-brain connection in action. Evidence also suggests that gastrointestinal diseases such as irritable bowel syndrome can actually cause depression and anxiety. And the gut microbes or the gut microbiome, which is this family of gut microbes that actually live in your gut, plays a huge role in this communication system though the communication mechanism is not exactly known what we do know is that we have more than 100 trillion microbe cells in our gut and these microbes are involved in neural endocrine immune and metabolic systems these microbes also affect our behavior and when we have a dysbiosis or imbalance of the gut microbiome this has been strongly associated with depression. So though we don't know the exact mechanism of the gut-brain connection, we do understand that there are certain key communication pathways that this relationship works. And as you can see in this diagram, so the enteric nervous system is one of the primary ways that the gut-brain communication works through primarily the vagus nerve that delivers information to the brain from the heart, from the lungs, pancreas, liver, stomach, and intestines. There's also the HPA axis that gets involved or the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the immune system, and secretion of molecules from the microbes themselves, such as neurotransmitters, proteins, and short chain fatty acids. So when we look at the hypothalamic and pituitary adrenal axis, we understand the HPA axis as one of the primary mechanisms of controlling our stress response. And we need this actually to flee from a stressor or when we're in danger to actually take action. However, chronic stress over time produces an overproduction of cortisol. And as we discussed in our video on how exercise treats depression, this can actually create a negative feedback where that cortisol and those glucocorticoids produced during this response to stress no longer have an anti-inflammatory effect, but now inhibit the immune response increase your threat sensitivity, can even impair your memory, cognitive function, can put you in a negative mood, and increase GI or gut permeability, which leads to leaky gut. Now, there is a bi-directional communication here where if we have an imbalance or gut dysbiosis going on in our microbiome, that can actually activate this HPA access system and create chronic stress within our body, which then turns into this inflammatory response, which can lead to an overactive immune response. Now, the immune response or the immune system is another way that our gut brain communication system or gut brain and body communication system work. You see the digestive tract actually constitutes about 70% of the entire immune system. And so when the gut microbiome is balanced, the body can fight inflammation more effectively by stimulating the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. The gut microbes also help to modulate both the innate and adaptive immune responses. 
Gut dysbiosis, on the other hand, creates an overproduction of inflammatory cytokines. And higher levels of these inflammatory cytokines have been observed in depressed patients. This can also create leaky gut where now toxins are leaking into your bloodstream or your circulatory system, which also activate the immune system and can make you more susceptible to food sensitivities. This inflammatory response also produces pro-inflammatory endotoxins, such as lipopolysaccharides. You see, when you have leaky gut and the gram-negative bacteria are being lysed, there's no protection for that endotoxin, that LPS, lipopolysaccharide, to be excreted. So instead, it goes through that membrane into your circulatory system, which creates an even greater inflammatory response, an autoimmune response, and what's called a cytokine storm. And this, in and of itself, can lead to depression. Another important way that our gut and brain connect to one another are by the metabolites, or the microbiome actually produces most of our body's neurotransmitters, such as GABA, serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. And actually more than 90% of all of the serotonin in the body is synthesized in your gut. And serotonin actually stimulates BDNF, or brain-derived neurotropic factor, which we talked about in our video on neuroplasticity. If you missed it, make sure to check it out. And this expression of BDNF helps to promote neurogenesis and the neuronal survival of serotonin. So they actually have this reciprocal relationship. The intestinal microbiota can also regulate nerve signals, may directly or indirectly affect your sleep, appetite, mood, and even cognition. So other important metabolites besides neurotransmitters are what's called short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are produced by gut bacteria through fermentation of carbohydrates and specifically fibers. It's actually dependent on the amount and type of fiber that is consumed, the amount of short chain fatty acids that the microbes will produce. Short chain fatty acids may actually directly influence neural function by reinforcing the blood brain barrier. The short chain fatty acids can also modulate neurotransmission, influence levels of BDNF or that brain derived neurotropic factor, improving your neuroplasticity. It can also promote memory consolidation and also regulate correct functioning and development of the microglial cells, which are uh, primary innate immune cells in your central nervous system. Another fascinating thing about our gut microbiome and this gut bacteria is that they have discovered that there are specific strains of gut bacteria that they have coined psychobiotics. And these psychobiotics are primarily in the bifidobacterium and lactobacillus strains. Administration of psychobiotics may actually upregulate the serotonin and BDNF system, further improving your mental health. They also have been shown to have a positive effect on the tightness of the intestinal barrier. In fact, many probiotics, not just psychobiotics, will have this positive effect on the tight junctions of that barrier uh, between your gut, immune system, and circulatory system. Besides increasing the expression of serotonin, psychobiotics have also been shown to increase the expression of GABA receptors in your central nervous system and also can um, be used to convert glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitter, to GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now, this inhibitory neurotransmitter um, is also used in many treatments to help with anxiety. So psychobiotics not only help with depression, but they can also help decrease anxiety and decrease your stress response. Also, this conversion of glutamate to GABA has also been shown that it can inhibit the transmission of pain messages from the central nervous system. So it can actually help to reduce chronic pain. And so what are some ways that you can support your microbiome so that you can improve your mental health? 
Well, one of the first things is you want to make sure that you decrease that inflammatory response. Remember, we've been talking about in all of these videos, there's this theme of inflammation leading to chronic disease and even mental illness and depression, right? So first thing that you want to do is to decrease your stress. Decrease your stress response, decrease the activation of the HPA axis, and even do things to help improve your vagal tone or turning on that parasympathetic response. And in the next few videos, we're actually going to talk about ways that you can decrease your stress response and even help to improve your vagal tone. You can also decrease inflammation by eating an anti-inflammatory diet. Just as we mentioned in our last video, eating junk foods is very inflammatory and can also be depleting you of the essential micronutrients that you need. So make sure that you're eating a variety of whole foods and stick to an anti-inflammatory diet like the Mediterranean diet and the MIND diet, just as we discussed in that video on neuroplasticity. You also want to decrease your exposure to toxins. We get diversity in our microbiome by our environment and all the different bacteria that are in our environment. If you're constantly wiping things down with bleach and killing all the bacteria, then you're actually affecting and impacting your microbiome. Also a thing to consider are antibiotics. I know we don't think of antibiotics as toxins because in many cases they save lives and they are essential. But please try to limit your use of antibiotics if you can, because antibiotics are one of the primary causes of dysbiosis because they clean out all of the good and bad bacteria. And if you don't have a healthy lifestyle to support re-diversifying your microbiome and repopulating it, then you're going to be at an increased risk for leaky gut and of course chronic physical conditions and mental health issues. And another thing with antibiotics to consider is that when you take a course of antibiotics, it will actually take six months to a year for your microbiome to recover from that. So it's not something that you can recover from quickly. And so you want to make sure that you're supporting your microbiome and making it more resilient. And so um, one of the ways that you can help diversify your microbiome and really support it is going to be um, fermented foods. So foods such as yogurt, kefir, tempeh, and kimchi um, all provide a variety of probiotics and even psychobiotics that actually will help support your microbiome, increase diversity, but also help support your mental health. You also want to diversify your plant-based foods. The microbes that produce those short chain fatty acids actually feed off of different fibers that you're eating from different plant sources. So different plant sources are going to feed different microbes. And so diversifying the amount of plant foods that you're eating will actually help to diversify and support your microbiome. So a goal to have is to actually eat 30 different plant foods every week. If you can reach this, then you're going to definitely have a well-supported microbiome and a great diversity of microbes in your microbiome. Another good way to support the microbiome and to increase diversity is through dirt and getting into some gardening or playing around in soil and playing around in dirt. The dirt in, in that soil is actually good for us and can actually get into our microbiome our skin microbiome, and also through the oral fecal route into our gut microbiome. Also, you can get a dog. If your dog's coming in and out and playing outside and coming in the house, they are going to have some of those um, bacteria on them from the soil. And so petting your dog can also be a great way to improve the diversity of your gut microbiome. Another great way to support your microbiome is through uh, probiotics. And so one of the probiotics that I highly recommend, um, especially if you're trying to diversify your microbiome and support your microbiome, say after a course of antibiotics, is going to be these spore probiotics by Microbiome Labs. And their microbiologist, uh, Karan Krishnan, is actually amazing. And he actually has um, a video that I have linked down in the description talking about this product and all the other Microbiome Lab products, but specifically a training on the gut-brain axis. So if you're interested in learning and diving deeper into this topic, I highly recommend that you watch that video. Now, 
If you want to improve your mental health using specific psychobiotics to help improve your mental health, decrease depression, decrease anxiety, and also help to modulate your HPA access, I would recommend a product like this, Amari's uh, Mentabiotics. This is what I use. It's part of um, my Happy Juice formula. And the Mentabiotics actually um, that contain three of the top psychobiotics that have been studied and researched to affect depression and anxiety symptoms, um, such as the Lactobacillus helveticus and the Bifidobacterium longum and Lactobacillus rhamnosus. So I'll make sure to link to that product and the microbiome uh, spore biotic product down in the description. So is there anything that you do to help support your microbiome? Go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And did you find value in this video? If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel and share this video with others who may find it just as useful as you did. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.